Welcome to Jesus is Lord. We encourage you to stand on God's word through all circumstances. Remember, things only work together for our good when we fellowship with Jesus. And a long time, well, let me go ahead and read this scripture. And it's in Acts chapter 2, verse 15. It says, For those are not drunken, as you suppose, but seeing that it is but the third hour of the day. Let me tell you something. If somebody had a look in the windows a few minutes ago, they would think that it was a bunch of drunk. And a bunch of people that did, were just like hoot owls in here. But let me tell you something, honey. When you get in the presence of God, you start to leave yourself. Amen. And that Amen. real inner man starts to worship God. And let me tell you something. The only thing that's happening when you see people do these things that look goofy to the human eye is because they're leaving their self behind and going after God. Hallelujah. That spirit yes. starts rolling in you. Glory. That spirit starts moving in you. And if it starts moving in you, it's bound to come out in some kind of outlet. <laughs> if it's in a shout, if it's in a dance, if it's in a holler, if it's in a prophetic word, yes. once the spirit of God comes out and starts moving, it's going to demonstrate itself. Yes, it is. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. It's the best feeling in the world when you're surrounded by the peace of God. Oh, yes. Glory. Man, there's no drug can duplicate it. Uh, I tell you, if you find yourself stiff and unable to yield to the Spirit of God, try it. You'll like it. It'll do something to the problems. It might not solve them, honey, but it'll help you to stand. Glory. It'll help you to stand in that joy when you wouldn't have any joy. That's the truth. It's that joy that made the three Hebrew children be able to stand in that fiery furnace. Exactly. When they went in there, they didn't know the Son of God was going to be in there. Right. All they knew was that they loved their God and there was nothing going to stop them from being in God's presence yes. if it was death itself. Woo! Yes! And let me tell you something. That is the determination the body of Christ has got to come to for in this day yes. before we receive a revival that everybody right. is talking about. That's right. Let me tell you one thing. God is getting sweeter to me every day of yes, my yes, life. Yes, yes. Woo! He's starting Woo! to make me on the job. He's starting to bring me down to tears because I begin to hunger and yes. thirst after His presence no matter what. Monday. Hallelujah. Glory. To win the lost, there comes a cost. Jesus was nailed on Calvary and He died and He rose again. And let me tell you something, sin, uh, uh, saints, you've got to give up yourself Allow yourself to be nailed to that cross yes. so in your death okay. you can become alive in Jesus Christ Glory. and that He can show Himself big in your life. That's the only thing that's going to make a change in America. It's not the problems in the church. It's the problem the church is made of and that's Jesus Christ of Nazareth and Him crucified. Yes. Let me tell you, that's the only gospel there is. That's the only truth that I know. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Woo! Let me tell you something. Glory. Let me tell you something. You're talking about being tore up from the floor. But I'm going to tell you one thing. I have a hunger for my Lord Woo! that I yes. have never yes. had before in my life. And I know I told him yesterday, just yesterday, use me in whatever way you want. I don't care if I have to be what they call an idiot, but I know who wins. Hallelujah. Yes, yes. Praise God. He's the only truth I know. Amen. Now let's get to the message. Woo! I tell you, I'm so excited about His presence because when His presence starts rolling out, there's a happiness there. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. Woo! That's how, that's why you can stand in the darkest hour because he gives you joy unspeakable. What is unspeakable is supernatural joy that in the natural does not exist unless you are in the presence of the Almighty God. Yes, yes, Woo! Yes, Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. 
Praise God. See, when you start seeking Him, He starts revealing His presence. Yes, He does. And how to get there. You see, because see, I'm just a little girl. And that's what He was showing me the other day. Pastor Jean had a prophecy over me about a month ago. And it meant so much to me. Because it let me know how close God was to me. He said, I used to hear your prayers as a little girl. And now I'm hearing your prayers as a grown woman. Glory. I always was drawn to Jesus. Yes. Even as a little child. And I remember I used to go up there in the choir and I'd say, <clears throat> I'd start singing that song. Tell me the story of Jesus. Write on my heart every word. Glory, yes. Tell me the story, most precious, sweetest that ever was heard. Glory. Let me tell you something. The enemy will try to steal that from you. Yes, he will. Sir. He'll try to take and use anything in your life to rob you That's right. of your joy. Yes. Of your peace. Anything. But he knows that when you have yielded your members to Jesus, that you are such a threat yes. to his kingdom. Yes. That he's got to do something about you. That's right. Well, now let's get to the message. Praise God. Hallelujah. I don't know how long you're going to be here today. Well, I guess until I get over it. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> until, when, when I get over what ails me, then we'll go home. <laughs> and what ails me is God's got a hold of me. Glory. Hallelujah. you got to get at that point when you just want God to get a hold of you. Yes, indeed. You want Him to get a hold of your life so you can tell the truth. Yes, indeed. And stand there and not back back. Amen. All right. Um, turn with me to uh, Acts chapter 1, I guess. Uh, we're not going to really read in there just yet, but I want to give you some kind of little background. All right. I looked in the concordance of my Bible, well, in the, uh, I guess you want to call it index of my Bible in the front, and I just looked, and it seems like of all the books in the Bible, I counted, see, I'm not a scholar, I might be wrong, but here's this about. There was nine churches that I counted in the New Testament that they talked about. There's probably more, but I mean, that's what I counted right off that I could, you know, count. Be your own spirit of the moment. And was nine, there was nine churches one meeting, they had 3,000 souls saved. And they said multitudes began to come. And guess what? Amen. They were all healed. They were all delivered. Woo! What a powerful church. Yes, indeed. Oh, my gracious sake. Well, what has happened today? Don't sleep. What has happened today? The Lord hasn't changed. And so if He hasn't changed, then we must have changed. Well, I'm going to tell you. See, I know my God's real. And I know He'll do and can perform anything that you believe Him in your heart, heart, that you want Him to do. And so, here lately in these last days, this has been one of my favorite scriptures. I reckon it's because it's the most serious scripture of this hour. Because, you know, it's like Pastor Jean had that dream that night. And the Lord showed her that uh, he was playing reveille, Telling them to get up, get their clothes on, get their stuff in order, and get ready. That is all I have heard from the last year. From this one, from that one, from this one, from that one. 
And he has cried and begged for his body to come back to him. All right. So, anyhow, I don't see much of it going on. That's right. I don't see much of it. I don't see, you know, it's like they don't listen to the word of the Lord because they want an easy way out. Well, there's no easy way out. None whatsoever. And what they want is they want victory without a war. That's right. They want a prize without a fight. Well, it seems like when God started dealing with me about what it's going to take in this end time, just this morning, our pastor said, in the times of he ahead. All right? Then I've heard in other people that said, uh, in the days to come, things will be hard. And on and on. And people are looking to a man to make everything all right. They don't. They don't but forget the man, honey. With Jesus, everything will be all right. It might not be what somebody told you. But it will be all right. Yes, it will. Okay. Um, go with me to Revelation chapter 3. And like I said, it's like no matter how many times you pull the knob down like you're playing a slot machine, this is what comes up. Every time. It says verse 13. It says, He that hath an ear, Amen. let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Listen, what did it say? What did it say that the Holy Ghost would do? He said He would bring you into all areas of truth. That's right. And that He would speak to you of things to come. That's right. Hallelujah. And He said He would do nothing. Unless he spoke it to his prophets first. Right? All right. And hadn't it been prophesied that this year was the year of the church? And immediately, the church thinks, oh, we're going to be blessed. Oh, our church is going to be bigger. Oh, we're going to have this. We're going to have that. We automatically think about material things and not a flip about the spiritual blessings. We haven't got our mind in tune with God because we are not a spiritual church. We are so fleshly that we couldn't hear the word of God if He came right down and blew our eardrums out. That's right. Honey. And He began to talk to me. If you want to know how you're going to make it, listen to me. Heed what I said. And then when all this is over and the people haven't been obedient and haven't listened to them, they're going to end up blaming God for something that He warned them about all along. Again and again. Hallelujah. Well, so, let's go back. And He says, uh, let him hear what the Spirit says. See, a lot of times the Spirit says something we don't want to hear. That's exactly right. That's why he says try the spirits. Because the spirit might be telling you something, oh it sounds so good. It sounds good, but it's false. Oh. And let me tell you something. The enemy is screwed because he knows he can say anything to a body that has not made yourself available to a God and they can't hear Him so they'll believe anything anybody says. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you, it might be a long one today. Praise God. But I'm telling you one thing. If you listen to what God is saying, you might come out of here with a different point of view. And you might come out of here with a hunger and a thirst yes. to go find out what God said. Because God is able to speak to you. Amen. He ain't got to have no newspaper or nothing else. He already wrote his book. That's right. And he That's wants so. to make sure that you read it. 
Hallelujah. Okay. All right, let's go. It says, um, he's saying, what, hear what the Spirit is saying. And I've written here, it says, you know, it's a good word, you know, but um, we don't do anything about it. And, uh, you know, because we think God's going to let us slide because America has been a nation that has never had to have any accountability at all for nothing. Because they say all I got to do is hide. All I got to do is slip it under the rug. Hallelujah. And the Christians are the same way. They say, well, just because my brother don't see it, that means that God might let me get away with it. They don't know what I've been doing at home, so I don't have to do nothing if I don't want to. And they think that just because you show up and look good, that God is for you. But that ain't so. All right, it says, uh, okay, let's go on down. It says, uh, and Jesus is the one speaking this now, so you can't argue with him. That's right. There's a lot of people think that on the judgment day, they're going to be able to tell God what they want him to know and that he's going to go along with it. But you can't. So you can't lie to God. It says, he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. And to the angel of the church of Laodicea, write, These things saith the, the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of creation of God. That means I've been here through all the beginning, you know, in the beginning of time. So it's not nothing that you can't be able to tell me because I know. I'm the all-knowing, and you can't hide nothing from me. All right, he says. I know thy works. He knows. He didn't tell it. I know. So he already knows, so why are you going to try to talk him out of something? He already knows. That thou art neither. So you're neither. He knows you're neither. That means you don't stand nowhere. It says, cold or hot, I would thou work cold or hot. So then, how about that? So then. See, he said, I wish you were one or the other because I know what I, you know, what I could do with you. I might could use you one way or the other. But so then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew you out of my mouth. And I know that you've heard me use this scripture lots and lots. But let me tell you something. That scripture is for today. Miss Vista. It is for the end time. It is for this church right now where we're at. Yes, indeed. We want something without having to do anything to change ourselves. All right. Okay. I work in food. In food, when something is cold, it has to be 41 degrees. When something is kept hot, it's got to be at least 140 degrees. And when it falls in between and is neither, then it's called as being in the temperature danger, danger zone. Temperature danger zone. That means it's dangerous. It's in a dangerous place. And you know what that dangerous place is? It is a place where deadly bacteria grows where you can get sick. That's what happens to you when you allow yourself to become lukewarm. You are unable to do anything about anything deadly that comes to you. That's right. Because you are at a place where you can't fight. You're no use. Your weapons are down. The church is in the danger zone. A product of temperature abuse. They're up and down. That's right. Up and down. Up and down. 
And by the time they get through, you can't tell what they are anymore. They don't even look like the product they started out. Let me tell you something. Let me give you an example of some of the things that we have at school. Broccoli is a vegetable that you got to be very careful with it because if you keep if you cook it not quite long enough, it'll be so it'll be so crunchy you can't eat it. But if you could cook, cook it just a little bit too much, it's so mushy that it loses its flavor. It's very hard to get it just right. We've got to go beyond ourselves. We've got to get so we can tell ourselves, shit, self, shut up. I'm going to stay here till I get it. Amen. And then when you start praising God, when you feel like you're about to give up and you want to leave and go home, you start praising God and He gives you more strength to go a little bit farther, to go a little bit farther, to go a little bit farther. And a lot of times this waiting is stripping time. Yes, it is. Because, you know, when you try to remove something, sometimes you have to have a harsh chemical or That's something right. to put on it and you might have to let it stay there a while and let it go deep into what's really there. Being changed is not easy because we've been in our own ways so long that we want an instant resurrection when it took three days and three nights after Jesus died to do the things that he had to do spiritually that we didn't even see. That's right. Hallelujah. And you know that if he was in one accord with the Father, and it says that his sweat, his sweat was as drops of blood, how in the world do you think that we're going to get where we need to be with God with just a little dab of doing it? Not going to. Hallelujah. Glory. And then uh, let's go to, uh, let's see. That famous verse, chapter 1, verse 8, it says, But ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses both to me, unto me both in Jerusalem, Samaria, and the uttermost part of the earth. Well, you notice this. It says, But ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Well, the Holy Ghost is a gift. And he said you shall receive power. After, after the Holy Ghost comes upon you, you will receive the power. But the Holy Ghost, and listen to me what I'm saying because I don't want you to understand, get the wrong understanding. We have to stay in connection with where the power comes from. Right. To keep the power. That's right. I can walk around with a plug, with a clock or anything else with a plug in and say, I got a clock. I got a clock. Walk around. See it work. Plugged it in one time and it worked. But I'll never see that clock work for me again unless I keep it plugged into that wall. Is that correct? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, the Holy Ghost, you have to allow the Holy Ghost to do a work in you. The Holy Ghost is just a door. It says, you shall be my witness if you let that Holy Ghost do the work in you. If you let that Holy Ghost lead you, if you let that Holy Ghost become your God and your authority and your boss. Your boss. And two, it said that they went, they obeyed God, 
And they, let me see if I can find the scripture right quick. Um, after Jesus ascended, and it said, Then they went up into an upper room. And when they went into the upper room, they were far off from the people. They had to separate themselves so they couldn't be bothered about anything that had to do with this world yeah. because they were determined to receive the power of God, the promise of God. Let me tell you something. Determination has a lot to do with it. How bad do you want God's presence in your life? Yes, indeed. Did you know that not none of them had to go? All of them could have said, well, I don't want this thing. Let somebody else get it for me. My gracious. We never will. We look at one side, but we don't never look at the other. Well, they went into an upper room apart to be with God. They were in one accord. They were determined to receive what was promised by Jesus. They continued in prayer and supplication. They continued. And I'm sure they had been for, there for days. Because how many, how many times, how long is many days? Not many days. Well, to a person that's going to have to wait 365 days for something, then 100 days is not long. So you really don't know how many days and exactly what day it was that Jesus was ascended and whatever, but they were obedient to stay until they received the promise. Okay, and then it said, they stayed there and they prayed until their hearts and desires were not my will, but thy will be done. And then it says, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, that means when they had full, they had allowed the Lord to work inside of them. Mm -hmm. Because when they were there praying in supplication, it wasn't God that needed the prayer. It was them that needed the prayer to get their vessels right so they could receive the Holy Ghost. I hope you enjoyed today's program. Join us each week at the same time for Jesus is Lord. And when near Greenville, stop by the Bread of Life Tabernacle two miles past Welcome Middle School on Highway 11 and join us as we worship the King and enter into His gates with thanksgiving and into His courts with praise. Until next week at the same time, this is Brother Ken Jones asking you, Is Jesus your Lord? The river and the river is moving in me.